All right, all right, all right. We are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Here to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside the ring, backstage rumors, behind the curtain, juicy drama. We also talk about superstar, you know, uh, contract negotiations, injuries, and, uh, you know, anything like that. And we just, from promotions from WWE to AEW, TNA, Ring of Honor, you know, every and basically if it makes the professional wrestling news, Sorry, excuse me. Uh, we talk about it here on the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast. Super awesome podcast. Make sure you check it out. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Just going to reflect on what we talked about real quick. We had our WWE Monday Night Raw review. And we had our, uh, sorry, uh, we had our WWE NXT preview. Then we had our NXT No Mercy predictions. And now we're going to talk about Uncle Howdy's in-ring debut and analysis. So, uh, overall, what you saw on Monday Night Raw... It was the main event. It was, it, it, I felt like it was good. A lot of hit or miss in terms of, you know, scrutiny by, you know, uh, wrestling fans. A lot of people thought it was, you know, maybe a little bit too, it wasn't as dominant as it should have been. And people are arguing that, uh, uh, that Bo Dallas was dominant in some times. But overall, I just feel like this situation is, you know, this faction it's pretty delicate. It's a delicate situation. Obviously, you have to get the fans behind it. Now, the fans are behind it. They're, ch- you know, they were they were chanting, uh, "Uncle Howdy." You know, Uncle Howdy was pandering to the crowd. He, you know, brought back a lot of, you know, Bray Wyatt, you know, kind of, um, you know, nostalgic kind of stuff. And you know, he so far the faction has been for me. On a scale of one to ten, I'm putting it at a six. I'm putting it at a six. But uh, you know, obviously, this is still pretty much young. The tapes. And the promos about the, the videotapes, like I getting, I'm getting a little like, you know, I feel like, but then again, this could also, you know, reflect on the creative genius that was Bray Wyatt. That obviously Bo Dallas is not Bray Wyatt. You know, they're brothers, and uh, you know, not you know, trying to throw shade at Bo Dallas, or I'm not trying to be like, oh, you'll never be your brother or anything like that. Because I feel like he's he's an amazing superstar. And I, you know, in his in his any rig debut against Chad Gable. He was impressive. He was very impressive. He's been, uh, you know, haven't really seen Bo Dallas wrestle in WWE in such a long time. Such a long time. I think since he was like one of the running mates for The Miz when he was with Curtis Axel. And I was like, you know, kind of sucks that they did this to Bo. But now he's back um, as the leader of the Wyatt Six. You saw the Wyatt Six kind of help out, you know, Bo Dallas as he was getting attacked by the American Maid. Ivy now even got in the mix. I was like, dude, that's crazy. What are you doing, girl? What are you doing? But the match was good. The match was good. You know, Bo Dallas looked like he, you know, he was in shape. Chad Gable, obviously, he's an amazing wrestler. He puts anybody over in, you know, in terms of wrestling matches and stuff like that. I, right, you know, it is almost October. It is almost October. Maybe this could possibly be a reason why they're kind of holding off on this a little bit. And also, um, you know, being in terms of like Halloween, you know, uh, Halloween's going to be, you know, in WWE, it's going to be one of the first, you know, you're going to have Halloween Havoc on NXT, and then you're going to have them come to uh, the you know, the USA Network, uh, the, uh, SmackDown, and then we're also going to see WWE Raw being absorbed by Netflix. Maybe they could possibly be waiting for more grittier, creepier, horrific content once when they finally become under, uh, you know, Netflix's brand. You know, essentially, you can, you know, you can have this guy who's, you know, like Saw or like this, you know, sick, sadistic guy. But overall, you know, I, I'm i like not entirely sure I like him as a baby face. I was kind of hoping he'd come in and just like piss everybody off. And people were, you know, just scared of him. And it's like kind of like what you saw, like with the like with well, the fiend when he, you know, when he made his debut. Oh, my God. Everybody loved it. You know, when he made his debut, I think it was SummerSlam. I think it was SummerSlam against uh, Finn Balor. And uh, I thought the demon was going to come out. That would have been badass. But, I, like, it's he obviously he's not his brother. He's not his brother, but he he's still an amazing uh, talent uh, like Bray Wyatt was, you know, before he passed away. But overall, my Uncle Howdy faction, uh, you know, I still feel like, feel like it needs work. People are, you know, I feel like criticizing it a little bit too much. It is what it is at this point. 
Obviously, a lot of kind of stuff going down on WWE Monday Night Raw, like the constant lingering of maybe the New Day break up, maybe they don't. This whole Terra Twins thing with, uh, you know, the Judgment Day. Will Sami Zayn and Jey Uso the challenge McDonough and Valor for those tag team titles. And will Jey Uso finally get a singles run before this whole, um, you know, bloodline civil war things, you know, take place? This could, you know, with SmackDown and Raw both being on the USA Network, maybe this could kind of be a way for WWE, Nick Aldis, and, uh, you know, Adam Pearce to be like, you know what? At the same time, let's, you know, you know, let's we can do cross promotional brands once again until the you know Netflix you know kind of you know kinda, the whole Netflix thing airs January first uh, or you know I, I'm not too sure if it's exactly the first but in January in January 2025 um, I think it'd be beneficial for the Y six to kind of maybe jump ship to SmackDown kind of tear ca- cause terror over there because after you know this whole Chad Gable thing i honestly can't really think of him feuding with anybody else that would make the most sense when he started feuding with Chad Gable i was like you know what i'm not really big on this when he saw the wyatt's uh the wyatt family with Bray Wyatt make their debut they automatically targeted the main star John Cena and then right off the bat and then like now like that you know he's kind of been targeting mid card the Chad Chad Gable which just kind of sucks cuz i i do love Chad Gable and ultimately, I do feel like he's he could be a WWE champion in the future, but he never really made that jump into the heavyweight you know division like Bray did. So they're definitely handling this Bo Dallas you know in ring debut, you know you know just they're kind of playing it by ear. You know what I mean taking baby steps, which is the right thing to do. Which is the right thing to do a thousand and ten percent. The fans are you know they get a kick out of it because like I said, it is Bray Wyatt esque. You get that horror movie film and. Um, I feel like it could be big. I it's going to be bigger. I you know, I most I'm almost guaranteed that this faction will probably pop off once when you see WWE Raw go to Netflix is because they can do more grittier content. You know, not too much in the PG kind of, you know, PG 13-ish kind of, you know, you know, boundary lines, I guess you can say. But and then it's new American made. Faction, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like, the, I, feel, I, feel, I like it. I like it. it. Just sucks because the, you know, the moment that they decided to team up together, the Creed brothers, I, you know, I kind of knew I was like, oh great, like now we don't really get to see these guys live up to more full of their potential. Now we, you know, you kind of see, you know, a skid right now. But Chad Gable is not done with the with the uh, Uncle Howdy. He's not done with Uncle Howdy. This could probably run until, shoot, probably till you know after. September, but uh, overall, I, I you know I love Bo Dallas. I love the whole Bray Wyatt was one of my favorite wrestlers. You know, uh, it's he's a creative mind. He's a creative mind that will never ever be duplicated in the world of professional wrestling. He was a genius. He knew how to get the crowd, you know, the like to sink their teeth into what um, what they were kind of broadcasting in the ring on promos backstage interviews like and you know when they actually did have their own you know uh besides the videotapes like i thought you know bray wyatt you know kind of did it better obviously not comparing the two that would be highly disrespectful but um like i said i think it's it can only get better it could only get better and uh, you know i'm not too sure if wwe raw is going to be a three-hour show on netflix you know i don't see a reason why they wouldn't you know continue being a three-hour show I just, you know, it would be kind of crazy to see Uncle Howdy, you know, feud with people on Monday Night Raw. Imagine him going after, like, somebody like, you know, Jey Uso or somebody like Damian Priest. Or maybe, you know, he sees how the Judgment Day has been acting and they decide to put them in their place, which would be pretty badass. You know, I would have rather saw the Judgment Day feud with Uncle Howdy before um, before the American made. You know what I mean? But of course, you know... Can't always get what you want. Chad Gable was a great start because he's, you know, such a phenomenal wrestler. Kind of be a great way for, you know, be like, all right, for Bo Dallas, he'll come back and then he gets to work with Chad. And Chad knows exactly what he's doing inside the ring, inside and out. And, you know, it it, it was maybe like a test, maybe a test for Bo Dallas to, you know, kind of become you know, kind of used to being in the ropes a little bit. You saw him in the match. He was insane. He was fast. He was quick. He was agile. He, you know, at times he was messing around a little bit. He brought back the whole dancing thing that Bray did. I thought that was funny. I thought that was actually kind of super cool. 
and uh, you know, but these guys aren't scary. Like they're not that scary enough. Like kind of like the why it's kind of like how they did it. But right now, it just they they just don't I don't know they just don't scare people. And like when you saw the Wyatt Six debut as well, not Uncle Howdy, but when you saw them debut like two, three weeks ago, the faction wasn't as dominant as I kind of thought they were going to be. They hung in the hung into the match. They ultimately, you know, obviously they won, but it wasn't as much of a holy S word kind of moment. You know what I mean? And I feel like for this faction to work, they need to have moments like that. They need to push the button a little bit. They need to push. You know, uh, you know, reality and also, you know, fiction, you know, they need to blur, they need to blur those lines, kind of like what Triple H said, what made, makes for an amazing WWE WrestleMania 40 main event. But overall, I, you know, I can't really be too skeptical. I, I guess that's my overall analysis is, you know, just you know, kind of simmer down a little bit. It can only get better. And, you know, you bet your ass, it, you know, when WWE Raw goes to, to Netflix, they have to make this faction work. They have to. You have that horror horror movie kind of feel that people love so damn much. And you're going to be appealing to such new niche audiences. And, you know, they kind of have to step up their game. They have to step up their game in terms of cutting promos. Because, like I said, I'd like the tapes, but, you know, I'm not too huge on them. Honestly, you know, kind of had, you know, higher hopes for the promos and stuff like that. But overall, I feel like uh, it's just going to take time. It's just going to take time. All right. So we talked about Uncle Howdy's in-ring debut and analysis. And now we're going to talk about every single Tuesday we do this, climb into my DeLorean, gun it to 88. And we hit up my Tuesdays today in wrestling history on this date, August 27th. We go back in time, talk about WWE or just wrestling moments that kicked ass. Talk about birthdays, and we're going to talk about, you know, obviously wrestlers who tragically passed away. So, um, uh, yeah, do not go anywhere. 